welcome to another episode of Sequestered Storytime. I am your host, Jeff. 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 Oh, hey, Powderhouse Pickle Jar. Hey, Summer Little Sheep. What's going on? We're hungry. Yeah, we're hungry. You want a snack now? I'm trying to do, like, the show? We can't wait. Yeah, we're really hungry. I'm, like, starving. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm starving. Please, 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 please. Please get us a snack. Please get us a snack. Fine. I'll get you a snack. I'll just head in the kitchen and get you a snack. Very funny. I totally forgot that at the end of last episode, I got launched into space. I threatened to end sequestered story time, and the red dragon blasted off the powder house. Now, I'm trapped in space. He forgot that we got launched into space. Yeah, that's hysterical. But that doesn't mean we can't do a great episode. What do we have this week? We have a Father's Day video. We are going to check in with a candidate for the Somerville mayoral race. We are going to read a weird old book, as we usually do, and more. So as I try to figure out what to do about this, let's get the show started. to what I'm hoping will be the first of many presidential debates. Oh. Really? This is not the presidential debate. It's the debate for... Really? Oh, come on. All right. I've been told that this is not the presidential debate. It's the debate for the mayor of Somerville. Anyway, I'm your host, Jeff Chekai, and today I'm joined by all of the candidates for mayor. What's that? Yeah. You're joking. Okay, we are not joined by all of the candidates. We are joined by one candidate. Connie the Monster. Oh, hello voters! And debating Connie the Monster today will be an inanimate jar of mayonnaise. Please let's welcome the jar of mayonnaise. Apparently, these are the only terms by which Connie would agree to participate in this debate. First question. You would be the first new mayor in 18 years. What would you do to change Somerville? Mayonnaise, we'll let you go first. Okay, Connie, do you have a response? Yes, I do, human person. How is this jar of mayonnaise think it's going to be mayor? when you can't answer a simple question like that. I'd like to point out that the jar of mayonnaise is not, in fact, even running for mayor. This jar of mayonnaise is obviously a socialist that wants to steal all of our rights as Americans. I'm not sure that that's... Anyway, next question is to you, Connie. Lay it on me, Daddy-o. Daddy-o? What would your administration do to fight climate change? What is climate change? You're running for mayor and you don't know what climate change is? Listen, I'm a busy monster. Did you know that I run a newspaper and a website? Uh, yeah, we kind of covered that last episode. Climate change refers to big changes in weather patterns across the whole world due to greenhouse gases caused by humans. Oh, hmm, that sounds cool. Well, it was kind of cold yesterday. It'd be awesome if you humans could drive more cars around to make it warmer. 
if I am mayor of Somerville, I will make sure that everybody drives cars all the time, everywhere. Okay, uh, mayonnaise, do you have a response? All right, I'm gonna put that down as mayonnaise opposing climate change. Our next question for today is, what will be your top three priorities in your first city budget? Connie, we will start with you. I am very glad you asked this question, human. Please look at these photos. We didn't really talk about allowing photos in the debate. Let me read what I wrote on my incredibly successful Facebook post that had over 10 likes. Why isn't City Mayonnaise doing her job? Davis Square looks like a complete unsanitary disgrace. Two of these pictures were taken five days ago, and the rest were taken, and the trash is still there! Um, so... I'd like to point out that not only is it not the drawer of mayonnaise's job to clean up an old mattress in Davis Square, but A, the jar of mayonnaise is an inanimate object, and B, it's not even running for mayor. This is the kind of liberal elite media bias that I am talking about. Yeah, I don't think that this is an example of- And she wants to become mayor, but she can't even take care of a ward. Uh, even though it's not her ward, she is on the board running for mayor. She has no common sense nor commitment. Remember, in November. Any final remarks? Mayonnaise, you can go first. Well said. Connie, we'll give the last word to you. Voters of Somerville, vote for me or I will leave you weird messages on your Facebook page with lots of misspelling. That is my campaign promise. All right, I'm getting the results of the poll. We've polled all the viewers of the debate and we just got the results in. It looks like 99% of viewers think the jar of mayonnaise won the debate. Connie, you did get one vote from someone named Corny de Mornster. I win! I win! And so ends the first Somerville mayoral debate. Stay tuned to Sequestered Storytime for all the breaking news of the election. Bye. I'm Mayonnaise, and I approve this message. Oh, hi. But it's you there. When I'm wearing this hat, that can mean only one thing. Yeah, so what are you making for dinner tonight? Mac and cheese again. Oh. Usually they play the music right about... That's right. Magic. Today? Hmm. What should I do today? Hmm. I know. I'm going to read your mind. That's right. I'm going to read your mind. I'm going to guess what fruit you're thinking of. But as usual, we have to do it in an interesting way. So, let's think of a fruit. Think of a fruit. It could be a kiwi. It could be a cantaloupe. It could be a pear. Think of a fruit. Got it? All right. Now think of the last letter in that fruit. I'm going to show you the alphabet, and I want you to find your letter and remember what color it is, okay? Show the alphabet! All right, look for your letter and remember the color. Got it? Good. Okay, now you're thinking of a color. Hmm. Think of the first letter of that color. Got it? Now. Once again, think of a fruit that starts with that letter. Ready? Go. You got it? Now, I'm going to use my powder house pickle jar power to figure out what fruit you ate. But... I'm kind of hungry. Can someone bring in a snack, please? Yeah, I got a snack for you. Thanks, bring it in. Hmm. 
Hmm, what fruit are you thinking of? Hmm, it could be a banana, it could be an apple. Wait, I know! Grapes! Is it grapes? Are you thinking of grapes? You are? I did it! I did it! I can read your mind! I am magical! I am magic! This hat gives me magic powers! <sighs> Sorry, I got a little excited there. Um, magic. The kind folks in the Wonderland Spectacle Company are still back down on Earth. Let's check in what they're up to. Wonderland Spectacle Company presents... Cascade! One of our favorite places to visit is the Cascade in Melrose, a waterfall taller than a house. The 40-foot tall Cascade is part of Shilly Shally Brook, which shillies and shallies from the west of here in the Middlesex Fells. It tumbles over the cliffs, then it meanders its way to the Malden River, then to the Mystic River and the Atlantic Ocean. The funny thing about this waterfall is that it's seasonal, because most summers it runs out of water. Is a waterfall still a waterfall without water? The Cascade is one of the closest waterfalls to Boston. It's just a 10 to 15 minute walk from the Oak Grove MBTA train station. From the west side of the train tracks, head north along Washington Street, then left up Goodyear Avenue. At the dead end, cross over the little wooden footbridge into the southeastern end of the Middlesex Fells. Follow the Cascade Trail, and before long, you can hear it. At the left side, climb the stone steps to the top of the falls. Follow the rock circuit trail north along the ridgeline. From the rocky outcroppings, you can see Pine Banks Park and across Melrose. Look south and you can see all the way to Boston. Come with us to the top of the waterfall. We're looking for a nice place to draw. Here's what you'll need. Paper and chalks. Or you can draw with whatever you have at home. So I chose some colored paper because when you draw on that with white chalk, it really shows up. I'm using the white to show water. The water is rushing, rushing. You can draw the waterfall just by using a lot of lines. I draw horizontal lines to show the crest of the waterfall at each level in the rocks, and vertical lines to show where the water is streaming down. I use the side of the chalk to make the wet big rocks all around the waterfall. Then I use the tip of the chalk to draw lines where the water is rushing and rushing. The wet rocks all around the waterfall, focus your eye on the water falling in the center. Then, I use the gray chalk. I use the side of the gray to make the dry rocks all around the waterfall. Then I use the tip of the chalk, or the edge of the chalk, to draw some trees in the background far away, and a bridge. For the final step, I make some finishing touches with the white chalk in the foreground, some trees and branches in the front and on the edges of the waterfall. You can bring your drawing home and put it on your wall. And any time you look at it, you can remember what a fun time you had that day at the waterfall.
With fall rains and winter snows, the cascade comes back to life. Listen to the water, talking about how it carves out its way. Talking about the elemental power of nature. Talking about how the world flows. Winter is our favorite time to visit because the water has one more surprise. The cold turns the cascade into glittering pillars and sparkling curtains. It transforms the waterfall into a frozen ice palace. One, two, three, four. Turn it up. I was strolling down the street one day. Think it was more than I. I looked up and then I saw you The largest tree I ever have seen You were 93 feet tall Back in 1996 was your girth Not sure if anyone's measured you since Oh yeah Oh my sweet silver maple Largest tree in Somerville Do you think you can love me? I'm just a humble pickle City's got a lot of trees. Some are short and some are tall. But there's one special Acer Saccharinum that surely towers above them all. Yes, you do. Oh, my sweet silver maple. Summerville's large tree. Maple, what do you think? You think you can go to prom with me? Sure, I'll go to prom with you. You can? Yeah. Oh, my sweet silver maple. Largest tree in Somerville. A humble pickle jar. Oh, my sweet silver maple. Largest tree in Somerville. Do you think that you can love me? I'm just a humble Adventures of Henny Penny and Her Friends from the year 1899. 
Henny Penny. Henny Penny. One fine summer morning, a hen was picking peas in a farmyard under a pea stack. When a pea fell on her head, such a thump that she thought the sky was falling, and she thought she would go to the court and tell the king that the sky was falling. So she gayed and she gayed and she gayed and she met a cock. So that's an interesting word, G A E D. I'd never heard or seen that word before. And I did some Googling, and uh, as best I could find, it says it's a Scottish word that means to go. So I think in this case, it just means Henny Penny ran and ran. But I'd never heard that word before. Uh, so she gayed and she gayed and she gayed and she met a cock. And the cock said, where are you going today, Henny Penny? And she said, oh, cocky locky, the sky is falling and I'm going to tell the king. And cocky locky said, I will go with you, Henny Penny. So cocky locky and Henny Penny, they gayed and they gayed and they gayed till they met a duck. So the duck said, where are you going today, cocky locky and Henny Penny? And they said, oh, ducky daddles, the sky is falling and we are going to tell the king. And Ducky Daddle said, I will go with you, Cocky Locky and Henny Penny. So Ducky Daddles and Cocky Locky and Henny Penny, Penny, they gayed and they gayed and they gayed till they met a goose. So the goose said, where are you going today, Ducky Daddles, Cocky Locky and Henny Penny? And they said, oh, Goosey Pussy, the sky is falling and we are going to tell the king. And Goosey Pussy said, I will go with you, Ducky Daddles, Cocky Lucky, and Henny Penny. So, Goosey Pussy and Ducky Daddles and Cocky Lucky and Henny Penny, they gayed and they gayed and they gayed till they met a turkey. So the turkey said, Where are you going today, Goosey Pussy, Ducky Daddles, Cocky Lucky, and Henny Penny? And they said, oh, turkey lurkey, the sky is falling and we are going to tell the king. And turkey lurkey said, I will go with you, goosey pussy, ducky daddles, cocky locky and henny penny. So turkey lurkey and goosey pussy and ducky daddles and cocky locky and henny penny, they gayed and they gayed and they gayed till they met a fox. So the fox said, where are you going today, turkey lurkey, goosey pussy, ducky daddles, cocky locky, and henny penny? And they said, oh, Mr. Fox, the sky is falling and we are going to tell the king. And the fox said, come with me, turkey lurkey, goosey pussy, ducky daddles, cocky locky, and henny penny, and I will show you the road to the king's house. So they all gayed and they gayed and they gayed till they came to the fox's hole. And the fox took them all into his hole and his young cubs eat up first poor Henny Penny, then poor Cocky Locky, then poor Ducky Daddles, then poor Goosey Boosey, and then poor Turkey Lurkey. And so they never got to tell the king that the sky had fallen on the head of poor Henny Penny. And that's the end of the adventures of Henny Penny and her friends, published in 1899. Father's Day is coming up. Let's watch this video for fathers.
thus we come to the end of another episode of Sequestered Storytime. I am still in space. Hope you are having a good summer down on Earth. Maybe someday I'll get back down there. Oh wait, I got an idea. Powderhouse Pickle Jar, Summerville Sheep. What if I promise to keep doing the show if we head back down to Earth? Sure. Yeah, sure. If you promise to keep doing the show, we can go back to Earth. Yeah, we can go back to Earth. Really? We can go back to Earth? Great, we're going to head back to Earth. Um, I think we better end the episode now. See you in the next episode of Sequestered Storytime. Goodbye.